gentlemen, one of America's clowns, Red Skelton. Well, you can't top that. Good night. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's always quite flattering when you walk out and hear applause without doing anything, you know? <laughs> Man, that's probably the most applause I'm going to hear all evening, so I'm going to be smart and say good night. <laughs> are like that. They're always afraid that someone's not, not going to remember or recognize them. You know, like I was coming down the street this afternoon, there was a group of people there, and I didn't think anybody recognized me, and a voice yells, Red Skelton's in the crowd! And they all turned around and looked at me. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was sorry, I yelled. <laughs> nice to be back in Canada again, and I'm actually here by popular demand. I was here in 1934. <laughs> but but I, I, ha I have a lot of fun everywhere I go. I make it sort of like a vacation. As a matter of fact, I said to my wife, would you like to go on a vacation? She says, no, our marriage is a vacation. <laughs> well, she didn't exactly say it that way. She said, when I married you, you were my last resort. That's the way... <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm not going to do jokes about wives, because uh, I, I will say one thing, though, that my wife is one of the most unusual women you'd ever want to meet. The vicissitudes of life don't seem to bother her, you know. Um, I, I walk down the street, and ladies recognize me, Red, and they give me a kiss on the cheek, and she never gets jealous, you know. And she raises thoroughbreds and quarter horses, and one stepped on her foot, and she didn't even get mad. <laughs> so I think uh, somebody like that, you should always uh, be nice and, and say nice things. But wherever she spits, grass never grows again. <laughs> My wife's nice, though. She's really nice. She, um, she calls me Sweetie Pie, Honey Bun, and uh, she can't remember my name. <laughs> no, but um, I'm having a lot of fun here. Do I sound a little husky? Huh? Do, do I sound... I'll tell you what it is. It's the hotel where we're staying. Where are we staying? Yeah, world's largest basement. I'll tell you. <laughs> No, they gave me a lovely room with running water even when you shut it off. <laughs> but they got the greatest security system I've ever seen in my life. The security officer knocked on my door and he says, you got a girl in there? And I says, no, and he threw one in. <laughs> But the uh, reason I get a little, uh, a little husky, a little husky, uh, the, the change of climate. I came from the desert up here, see, and last night it was so cold in my room, one twin bed got in with the other one. Look, <laughs> I'm a 33rd degree mason, and last night I went down four degrees. <laughs> I couldn't sleep all night long, my teeth are chattering. I finally got up and took them out of the glass. I couldn't... <laughs> But no, it's a nice hotel. It's a nice hotel. They got a real bellhop over there. This guy's got one leg. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, nutty things happen around hotels. Hey, you know, if you, if, you, if you go to a hotel, you know what you can do? You can take a glass, a drinking glass, and you put it up against the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
up against the wall, and you can hear everything in the other room. Last night, I'm standing there. What do you think I hear? <laughs> a guy on the other side with a glass. <laughs> walked in one night, my wife says, come here, come here, come here, and I grabbed it like an idiot. I'm standing there for a half hour. I said, I don't hear nothing. She says, that's been going on all evening. <laughs> but you know, silly things do happen around hotels. I was here a few years ago. I was in Toronto, and the, the, during a blackout, the, the, all the electricity went off, and everybody had to walk up to their rooms. <laughs> so it was after my performance. I was at the, uh, that, uh, the big, ex what do they call it, the e e exhibition? Yeah, is that it? Uh, the C-A-C-A-C and the I, whatever it is. <laughs> Anyhow, I go into the hotel. Now, the, everybody has to walk up to the rooms. I, well, I start upstairs, and there's the first guy on the first flight of stairs, and he was so lit up you could read by him. <laughs> no kidding. He, he, you brush against him, you get an alcohol rub. One of the... <laughs> So I said to him, could I be of some assistance? He says, would you be so kind? He says, I live up on the third floor, but I don't think I'm going to make it, you know. Well, I help him up three flights of stairs. I open the door, and I threw him in, walk downstairs. Here's another guy. He looked worse than the first one. <laughs> so I said, uh, where do you live? He says, I live up on the third floor. Well, I threw him over my shoulder, and I pack him up three flights of stairs. I open the door, and I throw him in, walk downstairs. Here's another guy, but just as I got him on his feet, he started hollering, help, please, help. The security officer came and said, what's the matter? The guy said, what's the matter? This darn fool's been packing me up three flights of stairs and throwing me down the elevator shaft. <laughs> And one night there was a lady called downstairs and she says to the room clerk, there's a man up across the court. He's taking a bath and he has the shades up. <laughs> so the security officer goes up. He says, well, lady, you can't see anything but the man's head. She says, is that so? Is that so? Get on that dresser and take a look. <laughs> would, you, would you bring me the hat? Would you bring me my hat? <laughs> You know good help is hard to get these days. <laughs> Look, at, we got a maid that's been with us for nine years, and I said to her the other day, I says, Maisie, I can write my name in the dust on the piano. She says, education's a wonderful thing, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I got a joke for you. I got a joke for you. It's about time. <laughs> Two seagulls, Gertrude and Heathcliff. <laughs> He said, boy, I'm tired. I'm tired. She said, what are you tired about? You haven't been doing anything. He says, do you realize that every day I do this about 45,000 times a day? She said, you're putting me on. He says, no, 45,000 times a day I do this. He says, she said, wouldn't it be easier to buy some deodorant? <laughs> <laughs> They're flying, see, and she says, look, down there is the ship of fools. She says, how do you know it's the ship of fools? He says, they're looking up. <laughs> I got a joke, I got a joke. There's an elephant talking to a hippopotamus, and the elephant said, uh, you know? <laughs> The elephant did, you know, damn it. <laughs> you know why I like to do this lousy joke, huh? <laughs> Every time I wrinkle up my nose to talk like this, I look down the front row and they're all doing the same thing. <laughs> The elephant that, that said to the hippopotamus, he said, you know, there is nothing worse than a cold in the nose. And the hippopotamus said, you never had chap lips, have you?
I started to tell you something. Say, I may start to tell you a joke and then wander off somewhere, but I get back to the joke eventually, you see. At my age, your mind wanders. <laughs> Not far. <laughs> see, I found out a long time ago that I'm nutsy, but I admit it. I admit it. See. I found out another thing, too. I may be nuts, but as long as I make money, they ain't gonna lock me up. I know that. <laughs> I'd like to do a little, uh, little pantomime now for you of, of, uh, of, uh, of a little old man, a little old man and a door, a little old man and a door. <laughs> you think I'm acting? <laughs> this is when I'm acting. <laughs> we got a nudger, we got a nudger down here. You know what a nudger is? I tell a joke, she explains it to him, and he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little old man and a door. Everybody's so nice here. Since I've been in town, they, they, they can't seem to do enough for me. They gave me a big car to drive around, a big Rolls Royce. See? My wife says, let me drive that thing. I can stop it on a dime. She did. <laughs> but the dime was in the little old man's pocket. <laughs> She's driving. The guy stepped off the curb, and I says, give him the right of way. And she plows right into him. <laughs> What did you do that for? You told me to. I said, give him the right of way. I thought you said, get him right away. <laughs> well, we were out driving. We're out driving. Hey, I don't know who laid out these freeways in uh, Canada. <laughs> but you got to be proud of him over at the asylum. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, you get on one of them things you want to get off, you better be in the right lane at the right time, make the right. It happened to me. <laughs> Of course, I didn't mind. I'd never been to Kansas City before, anyhow. <laughs> anyhow, we're, we're, we're driving, see, and we go into this gas station. You know what I can't understand about a gas station? <laughs> the uh, cash box is out in the open, the office is out in the open, and they lock the restrooms. <laughs> Throw me my hat, will you? I got, I, got, I, got, I got a joke for you. I got a joke for you. You better leave the hat out. Where's it at? Has he got it again? Yeah. Uh-huh, you've been in my Geritol, ain't you? I got a joke for you. I was, going, I, I was driving the other day to avoid an accident. I had to pull in front of a lady driver. She was very nice about the whole thing. Said something about the beach. I didn't hear what it was. Why, you got a funny beach around here, huh? <laughs> this dear little lady, she must have been nearsighted. She mistook me for a Spaniard. <laughs> she called me Sebastian. I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> I got a joke. I got a joke for you. I, if, you if you've heard this, don't stop me, because I'm dying to hear it again. <laughs> Two highway patrolmen, they're driving, see? 
One of these officers turned to his buddy and he says, you realize that we've been on duty all day, we haven't given out one ticket? He says, we nabbed the next car that goes by. Now, it's a big Cadillac. <laughs> they tail this guy, but he stays in the right lane, uses the proper hand signals, the directional lights are perfect, he stays within the maximum speed. So one officer says to his buddy, I've never seen anyone from Canada drive this carefully before. We ought to congratulate that guy. So they pull him over. He <laughs> says, nothing wrong, sir, nothing wrong. Just wanted to congratulate you. 35 years I've been on the highway patrol. I have never seen anyone from Canada drive so carefully. This guy says, when you're crocked, you gotta be careful. <laughs> I would like to do for you now, as you get older in life, you uh, sort of look back at things. I remember a lot of things. Like, I remember when I was a little boy, you'd stand on the roadside and something would whiz by you. It'd be some horse feeling his oats, you know. <laughs> now you stand on the freeway and something whizzes by you. hit some jackass with too much grass. <laughs> <laughs> I heard two Texans talking over in the hotel, and one of them said to the other, he says, uh, I like the way they stand, see? <laughs> you never know if their thumbs are cold or if they've got gas. <laughs> he says, now that we're getting friendly with China, tell me, do you believe in Buddha? He says, I believe in what? You believe in Buddha? I don't know. Buddha? Well, Buddha's been around a long time. I, uh, I don't know if I believe in Buddha or not, but, uh, Buddha's all right, yeah. I like Buddha. I like Buddha. What the hell, I like margarine just as well. I play a lot of the colleges, and while I was at uh, Muncie, Indiana, at Ball State University, the students got together and they made Klim Kadiddlehopper a doctor of foolology. <laughs> so at this time, we would like to introduce you now to our friend, Klim Kadiddlehopper. <laughs> Nice to see you folks again. It's been a long time since I saw you last. I got married. I got married. <laughs> I had a military wedding. <laughs> well, there were guns there. Let's put it that way. <laughs> My wife is a lovely lady. She's uh, she's she's only uh, she's only uh, 21. Of course, that's uh, 150 for you and me. <laughs> She's very superstitious. For instance, now, she, she, won't, she won't do housework any week that has Friday in it. <laughs> yes, uh, since I saw you last, I haven't been doing much of anything. I never did do much of anything. I, uh, I've uh, been uh, uh, helping the Boy Scouts. I show them how to make them Boy Scout knots. Boy, I'm a whiz with that. Everything I see, boy, I tie a knot in it. <laughs> they made me stop milking, you know. <laughs> But I, I raise rabbits now, I raise rabbits. These are not ordinary rabbits. These are, some of these rabbits, they've never been outdoors. These are ingrown hairs. <laughs> you better start the car. <laughs> Boy, the way you reacted to that, I'm glad I didn't tell you the one I was going to tell you. <laughs> But the little rabbit was going to have an operation, but he, he wouldn't take any anesthetic because he was an ether bunny. <laughs> but you know, my, my rabbits are smart. My rabbits are smart. I make a mine. I shake a stick at him. I say, you mind me, and I take this stick at him, you know. The other day, I had a couple who wouldn't mind me at all, so I locked them up in a barn for a few days. <laughs> They'll never do that again, either. <laughs> I opened that door, I had more rabbits than I could shake a stick at. <laughs> The other day, there were a couple of coyotes chased a couple of my rabbits into a, um, to a haystack. And one rabbit turned to the other and he says, ha, 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 ha. 
We're going to make a run for it or stay here and outnumber them. He said, we're going to make a run for it, you idiot. We're brothers. Tonight, I would like to recite to you, for you rather, some poetry that I have writ, wrote, uh, rotten. <laughs> and uh, this poetry here is, um, the, um, this poetry is set to the same cadence as Rajah Kipling's poem, Boots. <laughs> You've all heard Boots? You've never heard Boots? <laughs> boots, Boots, marching up and down again, Boots, Boots. <laughs> In the slush and in the rain, cannons and guns firing far beyond their range, and there's no silence in the night. Now you heard it. <laughs> this poem is set to that same cadence, but this is instead of boots, this is called frog. <laughs> frog. Oh, by the way, I don't need glasses, but I reached the age where curiosity is greater than vanity. I just got these, I just got these a few days ago. My optimist came up to me and he said, uh, <laughs> my eye doctor, the optimist. <laughs> There's the guy one brick short of a load too, I'll tell you. <laughs> he says to me, Clem, come in and get your eyes checked. <laughs> well, I don't like checked eyes. I like them brown like they are. <laughs> I don't know what anybody would want with checked eyes. It's all right if you're a cab driver, I suppose, but uh, I wouldn't care for him myself. This poem is called uh, uh, A Frog, and it's set to the same cadence here. I will, uh... <laughs> I've heard it myself. I don't care for it. <laughs> I don't mind reading for you, but I ain't going to suffer. I'll tell you that. This is uh, set to that same cadence. Say, a mousetrap, I mean, maestro. Uh, uh, is he all rehearsed now? Okay. Frogs, 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 they are everywhere. Frogs, frogs, frogs croaking still the air. Louder, louder, louder is their blasting blare. And there's no silence in the night. <laughs> Well, you knew I wasn't Richard Burton when I came out here. <laughs> frogs, frogs. <laughs> Croaks heard three miles away, five, six, seven beyond that, they say frog. Frog multiplying more each day, and there's no silence in the night. <laughs> now, there's some undertone tittering going on out there. <laughs> now, either you hush up or I'll clear the hall. <laughs> so about two more verses ought to do it. <laughs> and you'll never get out of here. <laughs> frog, frog, don't try to seek them out. Frog, frog, frog hiding all about. Grab, grab, grab their throats and ring them out because there's no silence in the night. Frogs, frogs, <laughs> their good is only bad, flirting, flirting, flirting on their lily pad. Mom, mom, mom says no, but you know dad, there's no silence in the night. Frogs, frogs, 
Don't you know the strain? Frogs, frogs, please, please, please refrain and listen. There they go again. Frogs, frogs, and there's no violence in the night. What a wonderful proof that silence is golden. I remember years ago when I played Chase Theater here in Toronto, and I used to do uh, kind of nutty pan pantomimes and mimes. I'd do things like breaking an eggshell, I was the yolk falling out of it. <laughs> How to carry a thousand dollars, anybody knowing you've got it. Well, one gentleman says, I remember when you were in Vaudeville, you did a piece of bacon being fried on a hot griddle. So, yeah. So he said, if I, I'm going to be there to, tomorrow night, and would you do that for me? So I'll now do a piece of bacon <laughs> being fried on a hot griddle. <laughs> Ain't you glad you came? <laughs> to France. I don't know if you've ever been to Paris or not, but right in the middle of the town, they got a great big oil well that never came in. See? <laughs> hey, if you go over there, if you've never been, take your food with you. That, what was it we ate? It's a snail, snail. I tasted them twice. <laughs> Once going down. Now, there are two ways to get to the top of the Eiffel Tower. You can pay what's equivalent in American money, 15, 18 cents, and take the elevator, or you can walk up 1,222 stairs. That's what this is all about. A typical little tourist couple. Uh, uh, he wants to take the elevator, but she wants to save money on the trip. You have to imagine the wife, but we now take you to the Eiffel Tower. <laughs>
At this time, I would like to do a short pantomime that has to do with the youth and with the aged. And I'm certain that if any of you have ever watched a little old man watching a parade, you can tell exactly what he was thinking about the past, the present, and the future. business like with Biff and Marcel Marceau's Biff, uh, each, each performer finds some character that he does that has uh, become quite a favorite with the uh, public. Mine happened to be Freddie the Freeloader, and people ask me... <laughs> they've asked me a lot of times, is, uh, where did you get the idea for Freddy the Freeloader? And who is Freddy the Freeloader, really? Well, I guess you might say that uh, Freddy the Freeloader is a little bit of you, a little bit of me, a little bit of all of us, you know. He's found out what love means. He knows the value of time. He knows that time is a glutton that eats up life. We say we don't have time to do this or that. There's plenty of time. The trick is to apply it. Our greatest disease in the world today is procrastination. And Freddie knows about all of these things, and so do you. He uh, doesn't ask anybody to provide for him because it would be taken away from you. 
He doesn't ask for equal rights if it's going to give up some of yours. And he knows one thing, that patriotism is more powerful than, than guns. He's nice to everybody because he was taught that man was made in God's image. He's never met God in person. And the next fellow just might be him. I would say Freddie is a little bit of all of us. I'll try to sum everything up with a little song that I have written. The time has come to say goodnight. My, how time does fly. We've had a laugh, perhaps a tear, and now we hear goodbye. I really hate to say goodnight, for times like these are few. I wish you love and happiness in everything you do. The time has come to say goodnight, and I hope I've made a friend. And so we'll say, may God bless until we meet again. Good night, and may God bless. Thank you.